Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my modern C++ series. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about concepts and also how to use them with if const expert. Now, these are the things I've previously talked about recently on this playlist, so make sure you go ahead and check out those videos if that's new. Now, I got really excited about concepts after seeing a few talks at CPPCon, where I am now at the recording of this. So again, you might notice the video or my sets a little bit different here. But anyways, I wanted to, while this was fresh in my mind, go ahead and crank out a video because I was just so excited about doing something again with concepts. So with that said, let's go ahead and go to our favorite website here, CPP Reference. And uh, let's just go ahead and search for concepts, or we can go to the concepts library here just to get a little bit of a refresher here about what's going on. And again, the idea of a concept is it is a constraint on our type. Uh, that's the basic idea here. So you can read all about that if this is new for you. But I'm gonna go ahead and search for concept and see if I can get us to sort of the uh, right page or a helpful page here. So that's where we just were the first uh, search here. If I go to the second one here with the keyword, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on this. It declares a named type requirement. Uh, and this also gives us a different page here talking about constraints and concepts uh, and their basic idea. Uh, but if I scroll down here, what I also want to show is some of the ideas of how we can use or sort of um, combine different constraints, okay, different concepts here. So this would mean doing like a conjunction or joining two different concepts together so that we can make them more powerful. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start working with this a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and keep some of these. Uh, let's just leave one of these up here uh, because it'll be a nice sort of uh, review for us as we do a few different things here. But I'll go ahead and build this from scratch. Uh, I will note that I've downloaded G++16, the experimental version, if you want to use the exact same compiler, but it shouldn't matter. Uh, but we'll go ahead and build this up from scratch here. Uh, so let me go ahead and just start here writing my main here. I'll make this just a little bit bigger for you. There we go here. Again, I'm not in my normal studio, so hopefully this is uh, reasonably well sized for you. Uh, of course, I'm going to need to make sure I include the concept header. Uh, I'm going to include print because I'm going to need that. Uh, I'm going to want to do something with IO stream today. Uh, let's do something with vector. So just kind of doing a little bit of a setup here. And the basic thing that I'm going to want to do here is basically just write a print function. And, and we can maybe call it like pretty print or something like that here. And what I'm going to want to do here is take in a type. So again, this is going to be a template here, type name uh, T here, whatever the type is. And uh, let's just call it uh, T lowercase here and basically print this out. So maybe I could do something like use uh, C out here and do T. And let's just go ahead and kind of write this out here. So I'll create a vector here uh, and I'll just assign it one, three, five, seven, nine, uh, something like that here. Let's see if we can do this without any syntax errors. I'm gonna pretty print uh, our vector here. And you know, for now it's not really doing any pretty printing here, um, but you know, let's just go ahead and uh, roll with it here. In fact, I'll leave this uh, just so we can see the full compilation here. Uh, I've been using C++23 most recently on this series. So I'm going to stick with that here. Well, soon enough, we will see C++26. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure I do concepts. There we go. Compile, build, and run, and, well, a bunch of errors here. Okay, so I can't just see out a vector, but what I can do, if I go back to my pretty printer, is I could have done print and then just pass in the type like this. Let's comment out this line here for see out. And uh, now we should see this printout here. Okay, one, three, five, seven, nine, and it's got a nice notation here. So what I'm basically going to do is want to constrain this pretty print to print basically if it can, uh, and basically see if it can execute this code so we don't end up with this see out thing. Now, depending on what sort of type that I'm using here, we may or may have you know, different ways that we want to print things out. And we might want some control over that. But I think this will be a good enough example to show you how you can like choose one form of something or another. Uh, it turns out print can kind of, you know, do a lot of powerful stuff. I can just print out a vector here versus see out. But uh, that, that's going to be the basic idea here. Okay. So now that we have that sort of set up here, uh, let's go ahead and uh, review uh, some of our syntax here. And uh, the basic thing that I'm going to want to do here to make sure that I can do this print thing here is let's write some uh, uh, concept here. 
So again, uh, I need to write out the template. Uh, template, let's see, type name T, something like that here. So just kind of following along this uh, example here. Uh, not exactly this one because it's got a const expert thing here. Let's see if we can just find a simpler one. Uh, let's see here. I uh, can scroll down, scroll down. We might have to find like a, a very basic uh, concept. Something like this is what we want, right? So concept, our keyword, give it a name, and then the uh, requires clause here uh, on that particular type. Uh, and I'm just going to call this concept, um, uh, let's just call it printable, okay? Printable. Um, and I haven't exactly decided on my naming convention. If folks have strong uh, thoughts about that, I think we can go with an upcase P kind of following uh, what this is here, but maybe folks will come up with uh, some style guidelines for their concepts. Uh, but anyways, let's just require uh, or requires here that T, whatever this object is that I'm trying to be uh, printable here, um, let's just make sure it compiles basically. So basically what I'm going to want to do here is just be able to say, hey, can I do standard uh, print here uh, with this code here and on this object, right? And if this compiles, basically this works here, okay? So let's go ahead and compile and run this, make sure we don't have any syntax errors uh, with our concept. So no, no uh, errors there, okay, great. So again, we have our template here on the type. Uh, just to give you a few notes, the uh, requires clause is the template, or rather the uh, constraint on uh, T or any parameters, if I had multiple parameters here, uh, that's the basic idea. And then in this block here is the code that must compile, so to speak, um, right? And again, basically the compiler is checking that this is valid, right? It's checking in its type system, checking that this is valid code, right? So I can't make mistakes here. Uh, but this, importantly, again, doesn't cost me anything. Remember, this is stuff having to deal with compile time uh, that, that this concept is. So at runtime, I'm not paying any costs. I do have to pay some costs for compile time here still, uh, but that's, that's the basic idea, okay? So now, how to make this uh, enforced on our template, just a little bit of a uh, reminder here. Well, basically I can come here and say, is this printable? Okay, the, the type here must be printable. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to compile uh, and see if this works. And this still works here. Okay, so great, so we've enforced this. Okay, now the whole point of this video too was to be able to say, well, okay, I wanna be able to print things or maybe use streams, one or the other. But no matter what, I just want to be able to call pretty print and have this print function that does something. And again, you can sort of, uh, this is a little bit of a contrived example, but hopefully you can get an idea of um, you know, what our goals are here. Um, so let's kind of repeat the same experiment here. Uh, I'm going to basically copy this code here uh, and paste it. I'm going to get rid of that comments since uh, you know we've already seen it here. And this time I'm going to say, is this thing you know streamable, basically? Uh, you know, so I want to use the C out operator basically. Um, <clears throat> and let's play around with this just a little bit here. So I want to basically be able to say, can I do something like this here, right? Can I take the object and just be able to output it here? Um, <clears throat> now there's again, different ways that we might want to approach this, meaning like, is it the object or if this is a collection, like a vector, like I use in this example, can I like just print it out here? Um, so we might have to think about that a little bit depending on, uh, again, what we mean when we want to uh, pretty print something. Um, so, so let's just try to play around with this uh, code just, just a little bit here, okay? Uh, I'm gonna make this big here because I think we're gonna get some errors. Um, so how would we enforce this? We could sort of have the same idea of just saying, okay, uh, this thing is streamable so I can like print out the object here. Um, that's one way to do it, to just see if it works with C out. There's a couple other things that we could think about. We could say, okay, um, let's write this in a little bit more generic way by saying, what if I had an output stream here, something like this? Uh, could I do this? Is this a little bit more, uh, I don't know, not depending on C out in case you want to use output streams. I mean, this is specifically for output streams where we want to output stuff, okay? Uh, so maybe that's a little bit better uh, again, you can sort of decide, um, you, you know, what, what powers you want to see out is probably also fine if we're just doing standard print here, but something for you to think about, okay? So anyways, now we've got these two concepts here for determining if something streamable or printable here, uh, and I want to use it in 
uh, pretty print here. Okay, so how do I basically, uh, you know, I could basically put in streamable here, and let's go ahead and just see if we get some interesting error messages. Uh, we do, okay, uh, we certainly do, <laughs> right? This doesn't compile, we, we knew it was not gonna compile here. Uh, but what kind of errors is it giving us? Okay, it's pointing to V here. Uh, it's telling us, uh, and this is where you get the better error messages. Uh, it looks like GCC is even like, looks like it's even trying to print out a um, like nice indented block here. So maybe that's a new thing here. <laughs> that's kind of nice, but, but it's ultimately telling us, yeah, this requires streamable here for pretty print. So uh, because we don't have that, uh, that's that's the problem here. So. Basically, I want to get to a point where I can use one or the other. I don't care. I just want to pretty print this object uh, no matter what here. So what I'm going to do here is take streamable and printable and combine them into one other concept. Okay. Uh, so let's see here. This would be in our search page uh, conjunction. Uh, so joining things. Uh, let's go ahead and look at this. And this is the basic idea here, right? I want to create some template, um, again, on some type in the concept, say, okay, assigned integral is an integral and something that is assigned, okay? Uh, and then looking at the value of whatever that type is, right? So that that's the key here, taking these two here. So again, I'm just going to leave that up for syntax uh, purposes for just a moment, just so you can follow along and I can follow along as well. Um, and let's come up with a name for this. Let's say template. Um, class, sure. Um, although there seems to be, uh, yeah, class is okay. I was going to go, I was going to use type name that would still work here. Uh, concept, um, let's just call this out putable. I don't know. <laughs> uh, something that can be written out. You can probably come up with a better name uh, than I can here, but basically this is going to get, be something that's printable, uh, right, for T. So again, following this same idea and, and no, or uh, streamable. Okay. I don't care one or the other, and you'll you'll see what we're going to do in this uh, in a moment here. Okay, so it just has to be streamable or printable. That's what this is. Uh, so let's go ahead and change this. And we already saw that this worked with printable earlier. Okay, so let's go ahead and just show you all the code here. Um, so if it works with one or the other, this should work here. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, compile and run. We should see our vector. Uh, hopefully, yes, there it is. Great, great. Okay. Okay. So here is a uh, example conjunction to, to uh, you know, compose a more interesting or specific concept, right? And this further constrains our code, which is good, uh, right? Because we only want to be able to use pretty print on specific types. And if we use the wrong type, we want to get better error messages, which concepts tend to help us, right? We weren't getting pages and pages of header files. Uh, so I, I would say that this was better here. Okay, great. Um, so we've got this set up here, but now what I told you at the start of the video is I want to be able to choose one or the other here. Okay. And we learned about this thing called, uh, if const expert in one of the previous videos, uh, if you haven't seen that, go ahead and check out on the playlist. It's just a few, it's, it's recent relative to this video you're seeing now. Um, here's where we can basically say at compile time, again, this is code that'll only be generated at compile time. If one of these constraints is satisfied and I could do something like if, uh, it's printable. Okay. Do the printable thing or print else. Uh, we will do this. Okay, standard out here. Um, so again, that could be one way to do it. We might, you know, th this is again getting f more fine grain code, let's say. I kind of like this. I think this is neat. We probably have to be a little careful if we change what this means, or if this has like 20 things that we're joining here and we're depending on that in our if const expert. Okay, so just a little warning. You have to think about this, but you know, if you have one or the other and you just want it to work, right? You want to get rid of your legacy streams and use print because you've heard prints faster or whatever, you know, with the format strings, this, this could be a little nice sort of solution or, or way to work things out here. Okay. Uh, so anyways, let's see if uh, this works here. Okay. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, we could, we could sort of do this, um, 
in, in different ways here. Again, if you prefer, we could also say if const expert, let's see. Um, and then we could just put another condition here. If you don't, again, if, if else, and we could say if it's not printable uh, here, I'm gonna type, uh, and it is, however, streamable. Again, you gotta, you gotta be a little bit careful here, but that would be saying the same thing here. Okay, so I'll just be explicit. Uh, if I run this, it should work. Uh, as far as I know, there we go, it still works. Uh, and if you really don't like, you know, here, we can use print line. Uh, and I'm gonna do end line here. I know some folks don't like end line uh, and prefer the slash end, but I like end line because it flushes right away. And this isn't a performance demo, <laughs> uh, but there we go here, okay. Um, maybe we should also switch these around. Like we could have a preference by just putting this one first. Uh, and say if it is uh, streamable, do it, else uh, do the print here, okay? Uh, let's get rid of that here. Okay, so whatever your preference is, uh, it doesn't really matter, but it's the, the same idea here. Uh, oops, that looks like I'm missing one, uh, uh, or I don't really need this uh, here. This is what's implied here. Let me just put that in comments, okay? And that might be helpful to give yourself some comments um if you document your code properly okay so this pretty print again clearly is not using this option it is using print here okay let's be explicit about that printable uh, and we'll do the same thing here uh, let's say streams okay uh, and we should probably give ourselves another example something like i don't know the value one uh, let's see what that could use. Now I'm certain one will also work in print line, but I bet it can also work with C out here. So let's see if it chooses one path or the other here. Um, so we do have our printable, which worked here. And then this one here, because our first const expert here says to use streams, we got to use it here. Okay. So I think this is pretty neat uh, that we can combine a few of the things that we learned previously. So again, uh, just a little bit of a recap here. We learned about uh, writing a concept or reviewed it. Again, what the different parts are. We wrote one simple concept here to make sure that this code compiled for streams, uh, stream-based IO. And then we have our new C++ uh, printable, uh, or print rather, standard print to output stuff. And then we combine them using a conjunction so we could compose something more interesting. And then in our template function here, we used the more interesting conjunction here that says one or the other satisfies this constraint, but again, it has to be one or the other. And then we encoded that with if const expert. And again, depending on which concept we use, it's only gonna generate this code for the version of pretty print that works with streams and this code for the pretty print version that works with print line here, okay? But to the client, who's using this, again, if you're wrapping this up in a library, all they care about is calling pretty print and getting you know, the output in whatever form that means, okay? Um, now, again, this might be a little bit of a silly example, but you might think of it as maybe you, you, know, you might not wanna do print line if you have a really huge collection of data, right? And then you can write the pretty print version that has a smart buffering algorithm using streams or something, right? There's a reason that both of these exist again, but you can come up with some more clever code, but I just wanted to demonstrate how this works and anything with concepts. Uh, so there you have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Otherwise, um, again, we are from my uh, little travel studio here. So hopefully you enjoyed this content while it was fresh on my mind and had fun. And otherwise, let me know if you're using concepts in unique ways otherwise. And as always, feel free to check out the other videos, leave your comments in the description, and I'll otherwise look forward to hearing from you in the discussions. Thanks for your time and attention, and I'll see you in the next one.